This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's Smackdown time between two of the most popular notebooks that we've reviewed this year. This is the 13-inch MacBook Pro with Retina display, and this is the Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga 14. We're going to smack them down now. All right, so here we have two lovely laptops, some of the best keyboards you're going to find on laptops, and relatively small and light designs. Now, our ThinkPad Yoga 14, as the name might indicate, is a 14-inch laptop, so you get a little bit bigger screen here, a little bit more keyboard room there, and, well, MacBook Pro with Retina Display is a 13-inch model, 13.3 inches, really, so you're getting... A, Still, you know, a pretty good viewing experience there. I'm not sure that much of a difference in screen size is going to make a deal breaker for anybody out there. Now, obviously, you get the Retina display on the Mac, which is significantly higher resolution. The Lenovo runs at 1920 by 1080, but aha, uh -huh, before we get too worried about that, this is running Windows 8.1. We know that Windows 8.1 does not handle scaling real well on the desktop. In the Metro UI, yes, it does, but on the desktop, I find that 1920 by 1080 is just really a perfect resolution here. You can use like 125% scaling if you need or so, which I have here, to make icons a little bigger, but your dialogues don't run outside the window. Things aren't too small to use, all that sort of thing. Also, Lenovo used one of the nicest 14-inch IPS panels in the business. And this is, of course, a touchscreen for those of you who actually like Windows 8.1 or want something that is going to be forward-looking for Windows 10 as well. You got the full touchscreen here. Touch only, no active digital digital pen. You could use a capacitive pen with this. Now, our Mac here, Apple is not into touchscreens unless it's an iPad or an iPhone. So that's a nice screen to look at. Look, don't touch, or at least it's not going to do anything for you if you do touch it. It is a lovely, glossy, non-touch display. So this 2560 by 1600 display might not be touched, but it is one of the nicer displays on the market. It's quite bright. It's over 300 nits of brightness has full sRGB color gamut and about 77% of Adobe RGB coverage. But uh-huh, our Lenovo over here also manages over 300 nits of brightness and it has similar color gamut. So in terms of colors, contrast, and brightness, you're looking at very good models either way. Now, one thing we can say about the yoga that you just can't do with a Mac is, well, the yoga thing. You can do that. You can flip it over. You can use it as a tablet. You can put it in presentation mode, all sorts of things. So obviously, if you're thinking about the ThinkPad Yoga 14, you're probably doing that because you're interested in that feature. Otherwise, you might be considering the ThinkPad T440S, which is a 14-inch non-yoga-ing Lenovo with many of the same good quality features right there. So if you're using Windows 8.1, honestly, that is actually pretty cool in conjunction with the touchscreen. So again, it gets down to which operating system do you prefer? Now, for those of you who say, I don't care about no yoga -ing, I don't use no touchscreen, it's back to like, well, looking like the Mac is pretty darn attractive there. Now, how about looks and build quality? For some of you, this is going to be an easy choice right here. The Mac really sets the standard for design for a lot of other laptop makers that kind of sort of copy them. It's a gorgeous aluminum unibody design. It's slim. It's slimmer than our ThinkPad Yoga 14 right here, though the Yoga 14, as Lenovo's go, is certainly no chunky monkey, not that thick. Anyway, really gorgeous looking. The ThinkPad, especially for you ThinkPad people, and you like the look of the ThinkPad, it's a good looking ThinkPad as they go. You also get metal construction here, the usual roll cage inside, very durable machine, but it is your basic black rectangle with a matte finish. So for those of you who care about looks a lot, probably the Mac is going to win. Now how about ports? Mm -hmm. Right here, we've got two USB 3.0 ports. We've got a full-size HDMI. These are our controls for when you're using it in tablet mode for volume and for power right there. And on this side, SD card slot, combo audio jack, another USB port, and our one link slash charging connector. So pretty standard stuff for an Ultrabook, a good number of USB ports. You've got an HDMI out. But the MacBook Pro with Retina Display 13-inch model goes to town and really matches the 15-inch reports. Two Thunderbolt 2 ports slash display ports. So mini display port really. So that's a lot of monitor you can hook up right there. There's our charging connector, USB 3.0 port, combo headphone mic jack right there. This guy 
this side right here, SD card slot. There's also HDMI. So you've got lots of output possibilities there and another USB port. So you only get two USB ports in here, but you get a whole lot more display outputs. You know what it is you need, so you know, well, what that means to you. In terms of weight, three and a half pounds for the Mac. The Lenovo is heavier. These yoga convertible designs, they need more robust hinges and the touchscreen weighs more too. 4.2 pounds, so both relatively light. And of course, to be fair, this is a 14-inch machine. It's another size class up, but a little bit heavier. Now, in terms of upgrading, this is a tinkerer's dream, the ThinkPad. You can remove the Phillips head screws on the bottom, and you've got access to all your internals in there. You've got access to your 2.5-inch SATA drive bay, standard laptop drive bay. You've got an M2 slot in there. Good stuff. 8 gigs of RAM is standard on this guy. Now with our Mac, you know how Macs are. This, this is really no fun to open up. You just don't want to even go there for the most part. So, yeah, I, I don't consider this to be a very upgradable machine. I just really, this is my own personal machine. I haven't even opened it up. And you know, I tear up, open everything that we review in the way of laptops. Now, how about pricing? This starts at $12.99 for the base model. That gets you 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gig SSD. All the other specs remain the same. Dual band Wi-Fi AC, Bluetooth 4.0, which the Yoga 14 also has. For our Yoga, list price is $10.99. These days, it's selling for $9.99, so it's a bit cheaper. And for that price, you get 8 gigs of RAM, you get a conventional spinning large hard drive inside and an M2 caching SSD. If you want to go full solid state, you open it up and you got to put your own 2.5 inch SSD in there, or like 2.5 two inch SATA interface SSD. That's the easiest way to do it instead of trying to source an M2 large capacity drive. So there you have it for pricing. Now for horsepower, aha, uh -huh, that's where things get interesting again too. This is an Ultrabook. It has a ULV 15 watt CPU in here, typical of all Ultrabooks. It's a Core i5, 1.7 gigahertz. Now Lenovo probably will start offering a, maybe an i7, you know, a little more processor selection. It's still going to be ULV CPUs in here. Our Mac has a full mobile CPU, so you get the 28 watt experience there. Dual core CPU as well, core i5. There's a couple of different options. Base clock rate that you're going to get on your base model is 2.6 gigahertz before turbo boosting it up. So lower base speed, also faster mobile processor. So for those of you who do comp computationally intense tasks like large spreadsheet calculations, uh, compiling code, that sort of thing, this is going to have an advantage. Now with graphics, it's the opposite thing here, because this guy, though he might be very thin and light, has NVIDIA GT 840M graphics, 2 gigs of VRAM inside, switchable with Intel graphics for those times when you want to save some power and you're only working in Word or surfing the web or something like that. So this is capable of some light to better than light gaming, which is pretty darn cool. There are very few machines that are this size and this light and in this price range. We're not talking about going and getting a Razer Blade 14. Sure, you can do that if you want to spend $2,000. For something that is around a grand, you can certainly play Left 4 Dead 2. You could play mm, Battlefield 4 on the lowest possible setting as you might get 30 frames per second. You know, the, the, the most killer games... Mm, a little iffy. Anything else, pretty good on this. The Mac used to look pretty good because it has Intel Iris graphics. That is integrated graphics, but it's a step up than the usual HD 4400. It's pretty darn good. It's enough to give you a little punch in, say, World of Warcraft, which is a pretty forgiving and scalable game, or Diablo 3 particularly, but it doesn't really match. So if you need a lot of graphics prowess, then you're going to want the ThinkPad Yoga 14. If you want more computational power, you're going to want the MacBook Pro. Like I said, Compiling code, long spreadsheet calculations, that's where processor becomes important. For this, it's for gaming, it's getting a little extra oomph when you're doing video export and when you're working with images and stuff like that for the ThinkPad Yoga. Now, keyboards, you're getting the best in the business with both of these. My personal preference is the ThinkPad keyboard. I like the smile-shaped keys, the little con cave surfaces right here. They're both very good though, but this to me is one of the dreamiest keyboards there is. Both of them have backlighting. It's ambient light sensing, auto brightness on the Mac. Of course, you can adjust it with the keys. With the Lenovo, you press the FN and spacebar keys to turn the backlighting on and off, so you don't get the degrees of brightness there on that keyboard. Trackpads, likewise, similarly sized, very large, and usually Macs running Mac OS really have the advantage because just Fantastic trackboard pad experience, and indeed it is. But the Lenovo trackpad is Synaptics one. It's also very good. And for those of you who actually like the eraser stick pointer, of course, 
that's there as well. But very pleasant experience, good for multi-touch. It all works well. Lastly, we got battery life to talk about. And Apple claims nine hours for the 13-inch Retina MacBook Pro. And I can tell you that I typically get between seven and a half and, well, almost nine hours using it. And that's with brightness set to about 40% and Wi-Fi on. And it really depends on what tasks you're doing. And that's in a stream with some streaming video in there, say Netflix Full HD or Amazon Prime Instant Video doing some word processing, writing some reviews, playing music in the background, web surfing, social networking, that sort of thing. ThinkPad pretty much is a six to six and a half hour machine using the same tasks and the same brightness setting with Wi-Fi on as well. So the Mac will last you longer on a charge. So there you have it. You know how our Smackdowns go. Often there isn't a clear winner because we're looking at two machines that are both, well, really good, strong machines. The Mac's going to cost you a bit more. If looks count, it's the one for you. If a slightly larger screen, if the touch screen, if the Windows 8 experience, because you're more of a Windows person, is the thing for you, then the ThinkPad is going to win. Also, the dedicated graphics on the ThinkPad, great for you folks who want to do some light to moderate gaming on it. With the Mac, you get that stunning retina display. It's just lovely if you're doing a whole lot of Photoshop image editing. It also has the stronger CPU for those of you who do computationally heavy things, even though it's not going to keep up with the yoga in terms of gaming. I can tell you either way, you're getting a nice machine though. So that's the ThinkPad Yoga 14 versus the 13-inch Retina MacBook Pro. Great machines, both of them. Either way, you're not going to go wrong. As always, you know, I tell you this every single time we smack down the Mac with something that runs Windows. If you like Mac OS, this is the way to go. If you're planning on running Windows mostly, go with the Windows machine. The drivers for on Macs to run Windows just not so good, especially when it comes to power management and the trackpad, all the things that make it delightful when you are running Mac OS. And the ThinkPad, obviously, well, it does that yoga thing. It has a touch screen. It's got all those Windows 8 kind of aware features, whereas this one is just a laptop. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to watch our video reviews of each of these, read our full written reviews, and hit that like button.